Hey, today we're going to talk about the Narrow Implant 2.9 Neodent GM Implant. Come on in. So, first of all, the look of the design very similar to Helix. It's got that helicoidal flute, aggressive threads on the bottom, a little bit more squared off, compressive thread towards the coronal half, right? We talked about the connection itself. It still has that 16 degree. Morris Taper still has a nice deep connection. They're indexed, right? Still has a platform switch. We can see that in the top here with the connection of this thing. We slide over, we look at the indications. So let's put it this way. Let's keep it simple, stupid. Go from the canines, no canines, but anterior to the canines. We can do our lower incisors. You can do your upper maxillary laterals. And then of course we could always tie this in to larger implants in the posterior if we want to do some bridge work, things like um, an overdenture and so forth. So we can move over just one more page. We're going to look at there is uh, our restorative options. You see we have a temporary titanium abutment. We have tie bases. They do come in a four and a six height for the retention where we're cementing the crowns. And they do have a 0.8 up to a 4.5 in the marginal height. Okay, it's a 3.5 diameter. Same thing with the universal abutments. What's nice is we have a straight and a 17 degree. You also have this micro conical. This is meant for single or multiple screw retain restorations and could even add that into uh, a larger construct. And then you have our lovely overdenture, our tin abutment, which is a locator-like abutment overdenture type to snap in. Same size as what we currently use on our other systems. Last thing, this kit that we're going to go over right now, it has both two features, the conventional aspect and the guided. So I want everybody to see the sleeve, especially our labs, just so they know that outer diameter is a 4.0, inner diameter 2.9, and then this thing is available on most of our software systems for treatment planning right now. All right, let's take a look. So here we go. We're into our kit. If we start from the bottom, you got your tissue punch, you've got your bone gardener, and then you've got your pilot. Once we go one, two, three, and back up towards the middle of the kit, we now have a 10, 12, or a 14 length on our implants, our 2.9s. So very similar, it's obviously an easy guide type guided system. You've got your, um, your 2.0 for softer bone. You got a 2.9 for dense bone. That last thing that we usually see is that counter bore or counter sink to help with just a cortical bone at the top. And then we're cascading on over to our latch type driver type for our wrench. You see it's loaded on the wrench already. You've got your screwdriver manual. You've got the one for the wrench. You've got your micro conical for your screw retains if you got to drop that on top of the straight i really like this there's a x-ray pin directional indicator that has the uh, marks in the side so that we can see that on an x-ray hopefully we add this soon to the gm kit for our other implants as well but i love that this thing shows you your lines your marks on the side right and then you can even reference those right in the kit okay now, I'm talking about a drilling sequence, and I did this one conventionally. I started at the top with the conventional drill, use the spear, right? So that's your first step. Second step, and then if we're in soft bone, we're gonna place our implant. So there's our spear, there's our two millimeter. I go over to our 2.9, which is obviously undersized. That's our third step. If it's really dense bone, then obviously we take our counter bore, we put that guy in or counter sink, right? and then I place my implant. So today, I wanna to make sure that everybody knew or understood this implant in. We're only supposed to max torque. Get down in there, baby. Sometimes you gotta take this guy apart. It's such a small diameter. I go down in and push, I get that guy to seat, and you see that my implant in this case torqued at just past 45, I'm actually at 50, before it starts to move, right? Same thing, it has two lines on the side, for a one millimeter and a two millimeter countersink. I caution everybody and say, watch out, make sure you probably only go in one millimeter of the bone because our max height on our healing abutments, the maximum height on these is a 4.5. So think if you're countersinking something into the bone two millimeters and you're in the anterior where there's sometimes a thicker tissue, you might be challenged. So this guy, optimal placement, it's a 3.5 diameter on our healing abutments, and this one actually is a 3.5 height. That's about it from our kit. All of these implants, you see I spilled water on the table. The narrow implant only comes in aqua. Thanks so much. See you guys.